In the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate, Mr. President, I would like to congratulate you, Your Excellency, on assuming the presidency of this session. I also value the efforts of His Excellency Chaba Koroshi during his presidency of the previous session. I would like to reiterate our sincere con condolences to the governments and the peoples of the Kingdom of Morocco and the State of Libya after the recent disasters that hit the two countries recently. Mr. President, the UAE declared this year the Year of Sustainability under the theme Today for Tomorrow to honor our shared responsibility to present and future generations who deserve to live in safe and prosperous environments. We also seek to honor and build upon the efforts of our founding fathers who strived for the advancement of our nations. Our responsibility is to preserve our planet, our natural resources, as well as our cultural heritage. The UAE believes that this fundamental premise should guide our approach to the existential challenges facing our world today. This particularly applies to armed conflicts currently at their highest since World War II and the increasing frequency and impacts of climate disasters. It also includes our enduring efforts to preserve and defend our shared human values in a world dominated by the unrelenting waves of extremism, racism and hate speech. Fortunately, more than any other time in history, we are capable of overcoming these challenges. We have reached the highest level yet of advancement. Today, we possess the technology required to find innovative solutions to complex challenges. We have put in place regional and international institutions to coordinate collective action and we are equipped with the necessary legal frameworks to organize international relations. This we have felt a, a lot during our membership at the Security Council since last year. Often times geopolitical challenges prevented the Security Council from achieving the desired consensus regarding very important issues, some of which were humanitarian and purely humanitarian in nature. The time has come to hold genuine discussions regarding a genuine reform of the Security Council, particularly in terms of the challenges of the right to veto and the need to expand permanent and elected membership and improve the approaches and work methods of the Security Council to allow it to address and sometimes preempt the crises. The UAE believes in the importance of maintaining a political and world order that is based on the respect of the independence and territorial integrity of the countries where international relations are in line with international law and the UN resolutions. As for the use of force instead of political solutions and to divide the world with those who are with or against, this will only lead to further chaos and wither our diplomatic tools. Nobody will be a winner. We would like to underscore here the importance of respecting diversity, political differences and development disparities. We must give prominence to common values to advance cooperation and integration across peoples and countries. It is essential to enhance the effectiveness of international organizations, key among them the United Nations. These institutions are crucial for building bridges, reducing tensions and establishing peaceful solutions. We depend on the United Nations as the first line of defense to prevent the multilateral arena from becoming polarized when political rifts between major countries occur. We also believe that regional organizations such as the League of the Arab States and the African Union play a critical role due to their understanding and familiarity with local context and are better positioned to play a pivotal role in supporting these endeavors and political processes. Mr. President, 
the UAE believes that the best way to resolve crises is, is through peaceful means. This is particularly important for our region, which is ravaged by weapons and extremist ideologies. The UAE continues to exert all efforts to reduce escalation and call for dialogue and diplomacy to resolve differences. We have been focusing on creating a new reality to strengthen economic integration among the countries of our region. This would benefit the economies and people of the region and will enhance regional stability and prosperity. The UAE renews its demand to Iran to end its occupation of the three UAE islands, Greater Tumb, Lesser Tumb, and Abu Musa. Our legitimate right to these islands has not diminished, and time will not diminish nor extinguish our sovereignty over these islands. We will continue to seek a resolution either through direct negotiations or through the International Court of Justice. This has been our firm stance for decades. We stress the position of the Gulf Cooperation Council that calls on Iraq to take serious and urgent steps to address the negative consequences of the ruling of its Federal Supreme Court regarding the agreement concluded between Kuwait and Iraq on the regulation of maritime navigation in Khor Abdullah. This needs to be done in a manner that serves good neighborly relations in line with the international law and the agreements signed between the two countries. Our ultimate goal is to push for the zero problems with neighbors as a principle. Regardless of how great these challenges, it is critical to restore the legitimate sovereignty of states and prevent extremist and armed groups from maintaining a presence in our region. We must move forward with a vision that promotes peace, openness, coexistence, cooperation and development. We believe that achieving this vision is possible. Our region is full of hope, resources, and our youth has great potential to lead our nations towards security, stability, and prosperity. This can only be achieved with political will and determined efforts. The UAE thus refuses to accept that conflicts in our region are inevitable. We believe that security, stability and prosperity will be restored in Yemen, Syria, Sudan, Libya, Iraq and Lebanon. We also believe in the establishment of an independent Palestinian state on the 1967 borders with East Jerusalem as its capital. Without eradicating extremism, hatred and racism from our region and globally, these efforts will not succeed. It has become abundantly clear that hate speech and extremism are closely linked to the spread and escalation of conflict. The Security Council acknowledged this fact in its historic resolution 2686 concerning tolerance, international peace and security last June, an important initiative in which the UAE played a prominent role. The promotion of the values of tolerance and peaceful coexistence has an impact on people globally, yet not only in words but through their dialect implementation that they would be embedded within these communities. Acts such as destroying a church in Iraq, burning the Holy Quran in Sweden, or attacking a Jewish cultural center in Argentina are all unacceptable actions that lead to chaos and discord. 
When dealing with these acts, we must do our utmost to refrain from using double standards and have effective and comprehensive strategies that would guarantee human rights, strengthen stability in communities, and address racist practices. It includes also to address the exclusion and discrimination against women and girls, as is the case in Afghanistan. Mr. President, the international community should be determined in its efforts to address the greatest threats to global stability namely the development of nuclear weapons and the undermining of the global non-proliferation regime. We must never tolerate this type of threat, nor accept the risk of a nuclear conflict, one that would result in devastating consequences for all. We also stress the importance of alleviating the suffering of people affected by conflict situations, particularly through humanitarian exceptions when sanction measures are imposed. We should be mindful that civilians and especially children are not responsible for these conflicts. In the aftermath of the devastating earthquake this year in Syria, we have seen Arab nations set an example by prioritizing humanitarian support. As part of the UAE efforts to alleviate the suffering of people affected by crises by all possible means, we plan to launch a digital platform that employs advanced technologies to enable affected states to better harness international support in the wake of natural disasters. The digital platform will help in providing urgent, effective, and coordinated humanitarian response. I would like to emphasize that the interplay between conflicts and other serious challenges, particularly climate change, food and energy security, and water crises, can cause significant consequences for present and future generations. The climate crisis is an important juncture in our history. The results of the first global stocktake only confirm how far off track we are in implementing the objectives of Paris Agreement. To keep 1.5 degrees within reach, we need transformational change. Some may see this as impossible, but the UAE disagrees. In this spirit, the UAE is hosting the 28th session of the United Nations Climate Change Conference, COP28, in two months. We will focus in two months on intensifying international cooperation to achieve the highest ambitions possible. The action plan of the conference will focus on four main axes, namely accelerating an orderly and just transition in the energy sector, advancing climate financing mechanisms, and enhancing the livelihoods and protection of individuals according to a transparent and inclusive framework. We must restore hope and be optimistic regarding our ability to confront climate change. The UAE believes that the transformation of the energy sector will provide the greatest opportunity to enhance and sustain human and economic development. It is important to focus on financing as an essential tool in this process. This would require, among other things, improving the international financial structure, encouraging the private sector to finance climate action, ensuring the fulfillment of pledges by donors, and to fully operationalize the loss and damage fund. In line with UAE's values and approach, we will utilize the contributions of women, youth, and civil society, as well as the private sector. Government agencies should also fulfill their responsibilities to confront climate change. 
we must remain united and work together to make progress. I would like to take and seize this opportunity to extend an open invitation to the world to actively participate in this conference and develop collective solutions to achieve a substantial shift in confronting climate change. A shift that allows us to move our focus from negotiations to achieving tangible results in pursuit of an inclusive and sustainable future. By addressing climate change, we can alleviate the food insecurity crisis. This requires further investment in food supply systems and safeguarding them from damage or attacks. It also demands a focus on the development of smart systems to increase productivity and minimize the impact of natural disasters, political and security crises. Water scarcity is an increasingly challenging issue globally yet it has to receive the attention it deserves. There is an urgent need to find new models of international cooperation to address this challenge and make it a top priority for multilateral action. The UAE, in recognition of this, seeks to find effective solutions by working with the international partners to address this important issue. Today, the UAE's Foreign Ministry has published a report which we hope will contribute to achieving this goal. To conclude, global challenges are becoming increasingly interlinked. No country nor organization is capable of addressing them alone. We are seeing this in the actions of terrorist groups in our region who recruit their fighters and mobilize funds across borders. We have also witnessed the repercussions of the COVID-19 pandemic, which affected countries throughout the world. The suffering of civilians from conflicts should not be defined by borders. The UAE believes that collective action is no longer simply an option, but an urgent need. Today's decisions will have far-reaching impacts for decades to come. We should ask ourselves, what is the legacy we want to leave for future generations? Do we want our legacy to be conflicts and crisis and scarce resources? Or do we want our legacy to be a stable and prosperous international order where communities peacefully coexist and are resilient in the face of global challenges? For us in the UAE, peace is our choice, development is our path, and a stable future is our destination. With the return of the Emirati astronaut Sultan Al Niyadi from the first long Arab mission in space, we see this experience that is invaluable. We see in our youth, the potential of future leaders, a leadership that is very promising, that will bolster our achievements and usher in a promising future. We are determined to follow in the footsteps of the founders of the UAE to achieve greater advancements and further investments in humanity and science for the people of the world. Our unwavering determination to achieve these objectives is demonstrated in our policies, decisions, and relationship. Thank you, Mr. President. The Minister of State for International Cooperation of the United Arab Emirates. We have had the last speaker in the